Whoa! Welcome back to Jeremiah Wonders. Guess what? We got Chris Rabb himself on the show today. So excited to get to that. Got to knock out a couple quick announcement, guys. Whoa, whoa, look at this. This Jeremiah Wonders t-shirt. We got some new merch up at jeremiahwatkins.com. Head on over there. Link below in the description. Why don't you go check it out? Want to thank the sponsors of this show. Thank you so much to Speedweed. We're recording live out of their studio right here, right now. Couldn't do them without them. Hit them up at Speedweed on Twitter for that marijuana delivery. Bronx Born Pizza in Bend, Oregon. What up, Thomas Schiffer? And then our buddy Tate Fletcher over at Caveman Coffee. Hit them up for your coffee. And uh, mention music. Uh, hit them up for your music needs uh they supplied me with uh, this sweet old saxophone that i have right over here also another sponsor of this show my bookie if you found a hundred dollars on the street would you pick it up or would you keep walking of course you'd take the money so why do you keep picking winners and not betting on them that's why i got on my bookie it's easy, and the pay when you win. Let's face it, where you're betting is just as important on who you're betting on. Listen up, I wouldn't be telling you guys about them if they weren't the best. Do the right thing, stay off drugs, but also go to my bookie and choose the bets that you're going to win with. Did you know you're going to bet games after the kickoff? If it looks like the uh, the second half is all going to hell, then you look and pull out and change it to the other team. If you're the kind of guy that likes to bet a little and win a lot, then my book is for you. If all your picks come through, you look at the multiple out of winnings. And no matter how you bet, the NFL season is the best time of year. Join now and my bookie will double. Join now and my bookie will double your first deposit. Use promo code WONDER to activate the offer. That's promo code WONDER. Visit mybookie.ag today. You play, you win, you get paid, my bookie. Thank you to everybody who's been subscribing on YouTube or listening and reviewing on iTunes, however you're consuming the podcast. All that helps. Follow me on social media at Jeremiah Standup if you're not doing so already. And why don't you hit up a friend? Tell them to check out your old pal. Check it out, Jeremiah Wonders. Go see what's going on over there. Want to keep these intros short and fast, so let's get into this podcast right here, right now. He's a new pal of mine. He's going to be a new pal of yours very soon. You know him from Jackass, Viva La Bam, CKY. He's here right now for you, Chris Rabb himself on Jeremiah Wonders. Hey, coming in hot on Jeremiah Wonders with Chris Rabb himself. What's up, buddy? (laughs) What's going on, man? So hot and bothered. Oh, man, so hot and... Bothered. <laughs> Straight up hot and bothered on this Damn, show. Damn, Barry White's on the show today? Yeah, oh, hell yeah, man. Making hey. it nice and sultry for Rab himself. Hey, nice to meet you. Yeah, nice to meet you, man. Uh, pleasure to have you on the show over here, Jeremiah Wonders. You know, this is actually the first time that we've been counted into a show. I feel like I'm at a news radio station right now. Yeah, me too, man. But I'm feeling a little funny in my pants with that sexy voice of yours. Oh, is it a little bit? too much for you to handle <laughs> my nipples are hard Whoa. <laughs> that's a superpower of mine making men's nipples hard mm. with this sultry voice <laughs> yeah <laughs> Well, welcome to the show. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you're back. Hey, I'm back. Uh, this is a, you know just a little preview of, of what's to come on the show. Uh, we met through our good buddy, uh, Rick Kosick. Yeah, old Kosick. Old Kosick. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I'm excited to have you on, man. I, uh, I grew up, uh, you know... Being a, a fan and viewer of uh, of Jackass and you know Viva La Bam and CKY and all that stuff, so oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah dude, it's pretty cool to uh, be chopping it up with you. Yeah, oh, that's good. But thanks for having me, man. Yeah, I uh, it's funny, dude. I I'm sure that you guys got video submissions all the time from random people that 
you know, that's why they had to put the, that warning, like, yeah. don't send us stuff. <laughs> I was definitely one of those kids that were, were like, oh, we're going to make our own jackass crew. <laughs> Just sending it out. Like, I, I'm not listening to that. I'm, I'm sending it in anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, uh, we like we do our own stunts and, and different stuff. Like, we try to come up with different ones uh, and just, like, mimic you guys and all your crew and i i feel like that's what part of the draw of those shows were was like you felt like you were watching your friends you know what i mean yeah i know and i think that's what i always felt like the reason why it ended up being successful was because everybody was doing it we just happened to have a video camera around when we were younger and we just filmed all of it yeah you know and and, and it was funny because in the beginning when people were trying to send in a bunch of videos it was because i think people didn't really get what was going on they were like oh it's actually the same people because there was a whole bunch of us i mean in the beginning of jackass it might have been 12 of us and then wow. it kind of it kind of went down to the main nine that there is now but um but there was also brandon de camillo myself and raykeon in the show and then we were a little bit in the movie but then we kind of uh went a different direction but but in the beginning people were like wait so who's on the show so i think kids were like is this just like a hodgepodge of all this craziness? Right. Maybe can, I can get can on. Can I be there. a part of this too? Yeah, because it's so cool. Yeah, so they, <laughs> they thought they could get on. So then they started sending videos in, and and uh, and I think it's funny, and I, I maybe I'm speaking out of turn, but it feels like what is ridiculousness? Because that all that really is is the videos that people were doing dumb stuff. Yeah. So, so they had to have been opening the packages, even though they said they weren't. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah. You have to think maybe they, they uh, took a look at some of those videos. Yeah, like, oh, some of these ideas might be kind of good, but we're not, we're saying we're not no, allowed no. To, to look at any of them. Yeah. yeah I did this, uh, I did this one, uh, <laughs> if you call it stunt, whatever you want to, it was barely, a, some of the, the things that I did <laughs> as a teenager were barely considered stunts. They're just yeah, like yeah. idiotic stuff. Yeah. Uh, uh, I covered myself in mud at this local pond uh, with a buddy. Like we were head to foot, like just swamp covered things. in like yeah. swamp thing. And we went to the the local pool and we jumped in the water and it just like filled the water with this gunk and mud. And oh. little kids were like screaming for their parents. And we literally just like ran out and we were like, we're doing it. We're just like, the, <laughs> we're doing we're, it. We're, you know, we're, we're making are. it guys. <laughs> just like, Oh man. All I can think of is that part in Caddyshack when then, when the baby Ruth is like in the pool yeah, just and they just floating. Cause, Cause I'm like, I'm imagining the mud probably seemed like poop or something oh totally yeah. it's just like this brown like <laughs> substance that slowly yeah. starts rising towards the water yeah, yeah it's terrible though because you don't probably don't realize how much of a mess you cause for them they probably had to shut that pool down and like clean the whole thing out and Dude, that's a, that's the thing about like most of like the pranks and the stunts yeah. like on jackass like anybody who's lo like really logical watching is like you know that caused a lot of that caused a lot of hubbub it's <laughs> just really not fair to those yeah kids. What, what were they doing they were knocking things over in the that general store and yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, what, what was rap thinking why would he do that yeah. i mean now you're gonna have to get a stock boy in there and he's gonna say like, that yeah. was you missed the point yeah that could almost be its own show is yeah. like the logistical nightmare <laughs> following up all those stunts yeah, and everything. Yeah. Like, okay, now if you think about it, this caused about three hours of aftermath harm yeah, yeah. for somebody pooping in yeah. in a toilet. In a, in <laughs> there was definitely a lot of aftermath harm. I remember one time we were filming Viva La Bam, and, and uh, you know, they were there shooting all day, and, and Tony Hawk came out because they had built, like, a skate ran or a skate park in Bam's house. Yeah. So they, like, went out to outside, and his parents were, you you know, d down in Atlantic City on a trip, and they came back to find the house like that. So we're shooting all these things all day, and then MTV leaves, and that was just like right when Tony like he dropped in on something and then he kicked his foot through the wall into the bathroom. So there was like a hole all the way through from the kitchen into the bathroom, and MTV's like, "Oh, we weren't there for that, so we don't have to like fix that." And <laughs> I just remember that being this big issue of like, uh well okay that was a little bit of the aftermath of after they left yeah it still was yeah, going who puts on the bill on this yeah. on this <laughs> on this rowdiness and, and april margera she was uh really cool about it she was like well it is tony hawk all right it's excuse i'll let this one slide yeah. it's tony yeah. hawk yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but. was there anything that caused like serious like like you having to put out a lot of fires after you did a certain stunt where like one of one of the crew had to be like oh i have to 
I have to pay for this out of my own pocket. Like MTV isn't covering this stuff or. Yeah. There, there, uh, one that I can think of right off the top of my head was, um, I had did this, this bit that was probably a little bit, uh, it, it wasn't very PC at the time, but I, <laughs> but, uh, you know, this was back 2000 and, uh, I, I basically put on this jock strap and squirted a bunch of fake blood on my like butt crack to indicate that I had been, uh, Rapes. Raped. <laughs> yeah, we can say that on this show. <laughs> Raped, everybody. <laughs> so, fresh yes, out of prison, uh, Rab is running for his right. life. Well, the fresh out of prison part is hilarious because <laughs> I come running out of this bush, and I know this is nothing to joke about now. Obviously, it's terrible. But at the time, when you're 20 years old, you don't think about anybody but yourself. And and so I was like, this is going to be hilarious. I'm going to put blood on my ass, and I'm going to run out of this bush into the middle of the highway screaming like that I got raped. So, uh, so I do this and I run out into the middle of traffic. And when I did like, you know, cars were stopping, swerving out of the way, trying to figure that out, like what was going on. And then the cops had like the state troopers had come by right while that was happening too. Oh. And so, so they pull off and I'm, I'm like, Oh man, I'm caught as hell. So I was like, there's nothing I can do. I didn't have any clothes or anything. I couldn't like, there's nowhere I could go. So they come over and they're like, what are you doing? I'm like, oh, like we're just doing this little bit for a thing. You know, I thought it'd be funny. And they're like, this is not funny at all. Like you can cause an accident. And, uh, and they were like, and you're lucky that your genitals are covered with the jock strap because you would be a sex offender if you, oh. if you like were completely naked. And they're like, by the way, were you in Westchester on a bike uh, naked at this one point. I was like, no, nah, what, what are you talking about? Not at all. And they're like, okay, well, we're going to have to take you down to the station or whatever. And so they take me down to the station and they're like, do we need some clothes? I'm like, I don't have any clothes. So they had to wrap me in this blanket thing that they had. And I still have like the blood dripping from my butt. And, uh, they tried to get the footage from Joe Franz, the guy that, you know, our guy that filmed everything. So he gave him a blank tape. And, uh, and then he also had like a film camera and they were like, oh, well, like we want the film. And he was like, uh, do you even know how to process this? Yeah. So he takes the whole thing apart and he just hands it to him. He's like, I hope you do a good job and get this. And they were like, you're going to need to develop this and do this to see it. And they're just looking at him like, fuck, we don't want this. Yeah. yeah. You know? <laughs> so anyway, they take me down to the police station. They're questioning me about this other like flasher guy that's in Westchester in the town. And I'm going, nah, that's not me. Uh, it definitely wasn't me, whatever. And they were like, okay, so I'm sitting there. Bam calls the police station trying to get me out. And he's like, can I talk to Rab? So I get on the phone. I'm like, yo. And he goes, dude, dude, you got to come out of the police station with, like, the raped butt, you know, like, <sighs> naked again. And, and I'm sitting there going, um, okay. And I'm looking right at the cop, and he just goes, you do that and you're coming right back in here. I was like, shit, he heard you. And so I, like, I hang up and then they, they let me out with the blanket. I go and all that. And as I'm getting in the car and driving away, I'm going, you know what? That was me in Westchester that was naked on the bike because we shot a bit for Jackass <laughs> for that. And I'm going, that was me, the guy that they were complaining about being this flasher in Westchester. And yeah. I'm like, so I could have been a sex offender if I would have been caught for that. Stuff. Wow. So it's crazy. And then you're sitting there knocking on doors like, yeah, I thought it would be hilarious if I was raped. And then, you know, and they were like, Are your new neighbor, Chris <laughs> Rapp. Nice <laughs> to meet you. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so uh, fortunately for me, a lot of things kind of fell in the right, uh, you know, direction so that I not a sex offender and yeah. that, that's nice i'm not on that you, little you, red yeah. dot on the uh, search you, thing you, you don't have to be on the show with uh <laughs> with uh <laughs> don't have to be <laughs> i'm gonna find it yeah, there it is you don't have to be on the show with uh being like hi i'm i'm chris rab hi, hi i'm chris rab <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah and your face is all blurry and hey how's it going i'm chris rab um i happen to uh get raped in the and the bushes there, and <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they might get, get too turned on, on if I uh, <laughs> <laughs> if you start describing exactly yeah. what was going on. <laughs> my, 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 my cute, cute little twenty year old butt that had no <laughs> hair on it. <laughs> <laughs> wow, this guy's as hairless as a cat. I love this. This is this is my kind of material to be watching. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I, uh, I I had a group of friends that I would. Uh, would film these uh, these sketches with or whatever, and I remember one friend. This was a uh, he was a uh, the son of a uh, of a pastor in a small town in Missouri, and oh, we were man. staying at 
his house. Yeah. And we were dumb enough. We had just gone ding dong ditching people's houses while we were like in thongs. Like we thought, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we're like man thongs were hilarious yeah. in the early 2000s. <laughs> They're still funny, but they were like peak. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> peak funny then. So uh-huh. we, we were like ding dong ditching different uh, houses. And we, <laughs> we were so dumb. Like as soon as we got the footage, we were so excited to watch ourselves that we would, we played the video in his living room. Oh, uh, man. of where we were staying at <laughs> his pastor's his dad's house like, which is a pastor and uh we're laughing and we're giggling we're like oh we're so funny <laughs> <All this stuff. laughs> and uh the pastor he walks in and uh he goes pause that tape oh man and, <laughs> and, and he's like is that the wilmore's house like he he knew it oh. because the town was so small and, and we're like uh <laughs> and, and right away uh he had us rewind it to the very beginning so our whole night of debauchery oh no he's like rewind that to the beginning <laughs> And we're sweating this is bullets. This not funny anymore. Oh no! What like, <laughs> like so we're like like dancing around. We're in dresses at some point. We're we're thinking we're so funny. Like we're we're like on their main street. Like everything's closed down. Like he re- like, is recognizing. What have I raised? <laughs> exactly. What if, is this? Comes the second coming of the devil. What Where is going did I on? go wrong in raising you, little buddy? <laughs> <laughs> Can we go back in time to that moment? Because I will. I will. I will make that happen. And he made us watch the whole thing with him and then he goes alan do you think this is funny and <laughs> my friend he takes a beat and he goes yeah i think it is pretty funny oh. and and i was not allowed to go back to that <laughs> yeah, house yeah, yeah, yeah. like you're like the I, bad kid right? I, I, yeah. I was the one yeah i was yeah, the yeah, influencer yeah. because uh-huh. it was two brothers that i was hanging out with and for the longest time the mom thought that it was uh uh, my friend, the other son who was like ding dong dishing in the dress and like, uh, and it turns out cause we like had the same like haircut and stuff and it was like bad, like high eight tape quality or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, and then as soon, as soon as she found out that it was me the whole time and not her son, she wouldn't hug me anymore. She, I wasn't allowed over at their house anymore. Oh, I was the man. bad kid that was Wait, influencing. But he was doing it too, right? He was filming. <laughs> Oh. She thought that it was him on camera. Okay. But whenever she found out that he was the one that was filming, she's like, oh, that Watkins boy is not allowed. Arguably, the one that was filming it could be the worst I know, one. I know. <laughs> he it could be, be the instigator. It totally could be. It totally could <laughs> but be. But I, lo- I always loved that when we were younger because I was always the bad kid. So uh, everywhere I showed up, it was like, oh, Rab is the one that's causing the problem. It was like, your kid's just as nuts as me. That's why yeah. we're hanging out. Yeah. That's, <laughs> why, that's why we're friends. Yeah. That's why we get yeah. along together. Yeah. But I love that a lot of parents would not understand that much. You go, no, 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 get Rab out of here. And then you get me out of there. And it's like, and he's still getting in trouble. And things. Are, it's like, yeah, because he's just like me. Yeah, <laughs> you know? totally. But yeah, it was funny how they immediately, if you have a, a finger to point, you can do it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Must be that crazy Jeremiah Jeremiah yeah, Watkins Jeremiah boy. Jeremiah Watkins boy. That Watkins <laughs> boy is out of control. Mm, look at him putting dresses on. <laughs> Dude, I can't imagine, especially for a pastor, what what like what's going through his head. Well, also, small town in Missouri. It's just like, yeah. How like how does that even infiltrate your home? <laughs> Whenever you have taught your kids a certain way, their entire life is like, where are these dresses coming from? Yeah. Where are these man thongs coming from? I don't appreciate any of. <laughs> what is there a man thong store that i don't <laughs> yeah. know about did they make them themselves are they this desperate <laughs> either that or he got it from his parents uh is the word the dad's wardrobe really because a lot of times i think in those situations maybe some of those pastors are doing things that oh they're are... dressing up a little <laughs> a little naughty <laughs> getting a little naughty and, and little pretending naughty. like they're not yeah <laughs> how, so how did you meet uh bam and all those guys because you grew up going like to school with bam and yeah. And then how did that, how did that bridge kind of connect you, you and Bam together with like the Jackass crew and CKY? Because all that is kind of like this kind of perfect storm of yeah. friends coming together who are like-minded and are kind of finding each other and like, oh, I do the same thing as this guy. We're going to team up and make this like something bigger and better. Yeah. I mean, um, ba- basically we always tell the story, Bam and I, about how we met um, our friend Scott he we all skateboarded and we were in like first grade 
and we had had skateboards and Bam used to love drawing the Tony Hawk skull. And so my friend Scott was like, "Yo, you gotta meet this kid, Bam. You know, he he draws and stuff, and he skateboards." And I was like, "Isn't, oh, that, cool. isn't that great? Like, <laughs> like how simple friendship can be. Like, yeah. it, at, towards the very beginning, he knows how to draw the Tony Hawk logo. Well, <laughs> yeah. and he skates. I think he's gonna be your best friend. <laughs> like, it's that yeah. simple starting out. Like, and it was true, it. and it turned out, and the three of us were like best friends for the whole time. That's all it takes. <laughs> all you had to do was draw the Tony Hawk logo. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so we go over, and I remember we always joke about this. This is the first thing. It was like. Hey, hey, like you got a bowl cut? I got a bowl cut too. And then, and then we were just friends. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we both had this stupid bowl cut. Oh, dude, I, I had one of those all the way around for sure, dude. Yeah, That's so the mind. bowl cut, the uh, the Tony Hawk logo, and the skateboard just uh, connected. The perfect us. trifecta, dude. Yeah. <laughs> so so um, we became buds through through elementary school and that. And I think. Uh, That's what we call the Devil's Triangle <laughs> bowl cuts, <laughs> logos, <laughs> and skateboards. <laughs> That's how I like my little boys. <laughs> Skateboarding with bowl cuts and being able to draw sweet, sweet Tony Hawk logos. That's, That's the, the devil, devil right there. <laughs> <laughs> That's just uh, that's the devil at work. <laughs> so yeah, the uh, the devil was at work with the with uh, Bam and I, and and as we uh, we went through elementary school together, and then middle school, I went to a different school. I got kicked out of that middle school and ended up back at the same school that Bam was at. So we were hanging out again, and then we went to the same high school. And and in high school, I mean, I had always been buds with Jess Margera, which is Bam's older brother. He's one year older. No, he's actually two grades ahead, but one year older. And, uh, and so Jess was a musician and playing and playing in different bands and trying to, you know, doing the battle of the bands and that kind of stuff. And he met Darren Miller, who was the lead singer and songwriter for CKY. And those two created a couple of different bands before it became CKY. But, um, Brandon DiCamillo, who does like Chinese freestyle and, you know, all the funny stuff on the CKY, um, videos, he, uh, he, we met him basically at high school when we got into ninth grade and, uh, and same with, with, we, de we met Dunn a little earlier than that. I actually knew Ryan Dunn from my brother. He was friends with Ryan, uh, before I was. And, uh, Mark Hanna is another group, part of the, part of the thing, Fana or whatever. He's in a bunch of this yeah. stuff too. And, and, uh, so then that kind of formed, you know, and in high school is where we were really all together all the time. And so we would skip graphic arts class because this this teacher, Mr. Rob, he was just like, "All right, now kids, now settle down." Like, and he and he, and he just is like, "All right, I don't mind. Yeah, if you want to go out and film, go out and film, do whatever. You know, just just don't get in trouble. Don't let anybody see you." So we would go out and and like film little bits during the school day. Wow. And so he he was cool enough like, yeah. to have the foresight. Like, I'm gonna give these kids artistic freedom to yeah. kind of go out and capture yeah. whatever they need to. Yeah, absolutely. And, and cause we were in his graphic arts class and that's really what led to just kind of everybody joining up and feeling like we wanted to go film something and let's go film something funny during the day. And then it would turn into after school, we're going to film stuff and, and it just kept being little bits and it was just to make each other laugh, you know? And then that's eventually what became the first CKY video. All those years of, stupid skits yeah because you have some footage of you that's out there of you you're really young yeah right? like like i mean we started probably filming a lot when i was like 12 may i think there might be something out there when i was like 10 too but like when i was 12 years old is when we really were which is pretty cool because at, at the time like when i was growing up when i was a teenager it was, it's kind of not common for teens to even have access Two yeah. video cameras. Now it's like everybody has their iPhones or whatever, right, and it's right. super easy. But like, you remember, like it was a big deal to get your hands yeah. on a camera and be able to go out Absolutely. and film stuff. You and, know? and the way that we did that was was Bam's dad, Phil Margera. He had a VHS camera, which you know, when we were super young, was like he wanted to film the kids going to the beach and little things like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, like typical dad. But as Bam's skateboarding progressed, Phil became like the first guy that was filming Bam's little like sponsor me tapes. And we'd go up to Cheap Skates, this uh, skate park near where we grew up, and he would film his line on a, on a mini ramp or whatever he was skating, and he'd have little bits like that. And that got him to be uh, recognized by Fairman's, which was the local skate shop. And then that was really what started to get his sponsorship stuff ha happening 
And because of that, that camera was around and we were filming little skits and stupid little things because we had access to that camera. And that really led to what everything became. But the first CKY video was put out through BAM skateboarding sponsor, um, Landspeed. Which is cool to have, yeah. you know, distribution behind, like at least getting yeah. it in some little outlets and stuff yeah. like that, you know? Yeah, and it, and it all kind of happened really like, um, you know, just just kind of happened the way it should organically organically <laughs> i hate that word but but uh welcome but it, to la it, yeah, it's organic it's so organic <laughs> everything's organic <laughs> is it grass-fed <laughs> so the uh so it kind of all just started to happen naturally because bam skateboarding was 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 taken off and Landspeed wanted to put out a skate video and and bam basically was like yo i have all this funny footage of Brandon doing a Chinese freestyle of Rab tearing the stuff off of the shelves at the grocery store. And then, you know, and, and, and I did one bit when I was like 12, I, I shaved my head bald on the top and put Phil's suit on and Phil's a big guy. So I was like this little 12 year or 12 year old dude. That, and I was went into Denny's cause I wanted to get the, uh, the, the senior citizen discount. So that was my whole thing. I'm like, no, I'm like 75 years old. And I'm like, you know, so I shaved the head off or the, the hair off and put the suit on. To, and just because they thought I was such an idiot, they were like, all right, give them the discount. So that's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> so those were those little things when you're 12 and you're like, this is funny. And we're which just is a ballsy move to yeah. not care about your appearance that much at 12 to be yeah. like, I'm going to do this for a bit. I'm yeah. Gonna, <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, it's gonna, almost like this Denny's special <laughs> yeah it almost feels like as the time went and you became more recognized by people or whatever you almost clammed up a little bit you know and i sure. noticed that happened with bam and i noticed that it happened with me a little bit too because all of a sudden you're like oh everybody's looking like when when you were younger you thought like no one who cares nobody's looking i'm gonna go for nobody's it nobody's ever gonna see this yeah you know, that yeah kind of mentality it, yeah like that there's a little bit more of a freedom sometimes for sure that. yeah yeah absolutely and, and that stuff yeah it led to that first video that that the skateboarding is really what connected us with jeff tremaine and and knoxville and spike jones and you know pontius and steve-o and, and we men and all them and uh and so like Dave England and, and, and Danger Aaron, they were uh, in the snowboarding world and they were, Dave worked for a snowboarding magazine that was closely linked to Big Brother. And that's how they kind of got into the mix with, with Tremaine and Big Brother. And, and uh, Big Brother came to Westchester to shoot a, like film a thing with Bam for skateboarding. And that was how they first met. And that was probably like 14, 15 years old. Where Bam was, kind of, Bam was a prodigy as far as, as like yeah, skating skateboarding. and everything. Yeah. yeah, for sure. When we were kids, I skated too, but you just saw this dude jumping off of the roof into the ramp, and I'm like, oh my god! Like we were like ten, you know. So you're like, damn, he's already there. I'm like dropping in, you know, yeah, yeah. and he's launching off of roofs into the ramp, and um, so you could tell like right away he was he was on another level and, and, and that's what made the link. And then that's when, uh, we did the second video CKY 2K that one started to get a little bit more of a buzz in, in the other underworld, like skateboard world thing. And, and then that's when Tremaine came and said, Hey dude, we, we have the, you know, the big brother video and you have your video and it's, and it's very like, you know, similar sensibility and we should team up and make this happen. And, and Spike's got the connection over at MTV to try and make a pilot for a show. So the pilot really was footage from the Big Brother video and footage from the CKY videos and just put that together. And that's what, what was became. some of the stuff that made it into that pilot that uh, you remember? The shopping cart stuff, because that, that right. was uh, Brandon DiCamillo. Like he, he, that was like his whole thing. He when we were young, he would just be like, get in there. And then he would put on like a, like a night's outfit and be like, and give doing some whole voice to it and some crazy thing. Cause he just, he had such an imagination that, that, and still does. But, um, but back when we were younger, it was like this whole other level where we were like, Oh, I'll try to be goofy and make a voice and stuff. But he like, he was just on something else that none of us were. We were like, let's just go along for the ride with that guy. And so that was his thing was get in this shopping cart. And then the shopping cart became this kind of mainstay of what Jackass is too, yeah. because it, you kind of associate that as one of the staples. Yeah. Cause I mean, it's like on the covers and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 And it was, and, uh, and that was, that was Brandon. And, uh, and so that, though, that little section and that little bit was in like the pilot. I actually tore my rotator cuff 
in one of the shopping cart things and bam it was funny because bam you know he's a skateboarder so he gets like the whole basically trajectory of launching yourself off a launch ramp physics behind yeah. falling properly yeah. and, and skidding and all that stuff yeah yeah and so i'm there and he's i'm in the shopping cart and he's pushing me and he he pulls the ramp back and it's like at the right thing and i was like yo that ramp looks so far away from the bush he's like dude trust me that that's where it should be and i'm like i don't think so so I moved it up a little bit. He's like, all right. And then he goes and pushes me, and I went flying over the bush, oh. totally missed the bush, nailed my arm, ripped it out of the socket. It's like hanging oh. up like this because it popped down this way, uh, you know, into my armpit. And and then uh, I'm there trying to, like, uh, and I had to go to the hospital. And then they, they, they put this, like, sling on your body and on your arm and just rip it back in. Oof. But they shoot you up with morphine and stuff. And so that was my little taste of the love drug. <laughs> no, but <laughs> that's when I, I spiraled down after that. No, uh, but, but um, yeah, and, then, and that was on the first episode was that shopping cart bit. That was a huge part of what that was. But then there was also, like, kick your dad's ass day and all that kind of shit. Cause fam would do that to Phil. Like his dad growing up, grew up in kind of a rough little town called Chester right outside of Philadelphia. And it was pretty, uh, pretty, pretty gnarly there. And they would, they would get into a bunch of fights and stuff there, like the kids. And, and, uh, and so Phil, he was always a big guy, but he would be like, all right, come hit me as hard as you can. And then you'd go and you'd be like, all right, I can hit you as hard as I can. And he's like, yeah, hit me in the stomach as hard as you can. So then you hit you hit him as hard as you can, and as and you like do it again, do it again, and and then you do it, and he would he did this little thing with his knuckle. You just go like that into your arm, like when you hit, and your arm would like go limp and dead, and you'd be like ah, like it hurts so bad. And I just always remember, I'm like this dude like has these little like like Bruce Lee moves. Yeah, he knows your pressure yeah, points yeah. and stuff. He's like unlocking <laughs> things on your body. Yeah, yeah, and it was funny because I kind of figured out, you know what? He's such an Elvis fan. Cause he always listened to Elvis all the time. Elvis was always playing in the house. Was a huge Elvis fan. And I'm going, Elvis was into karate. Karate. Yeah. 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 Here you go, baby. <laughs> so then. Like, chop, chop. Hoo, ha, hey, ha, hey. <laughs> yeah. And so, so I was like, he must've gotten those moves from him, but it was just funny. So, so that was what kind of spawned the kick. Phil's ass for the day, you yeah, know? Yeah. And that, that, I think that was on the pilot as well. It might've been a second. You know, episode. it's funny. I think you're uh your graphic uh, design, uh, your graphic artist teacher is actually calling in to the show uh, right now. Oh. Yeah, um, hello, hello, this is Mr. Rob. <laughs> Wait, yeah. Who is this, Ms. Mr. Rob? Yeah, this is Mr. Rob. Hey, uh, thanks for calling into the show. Um, yeah, man, I, I just don't want to be painted in a bad light. I mean, I heard, I heard, uh, Chris, Mr. Rob there, yeah, yeah, you talking about me just letting you do whatever y'all want? That ain't true, though. See, I, I was a genius. I was a creative genius, and I figured it out that y'all got something to prove, and you got something to show the world. And that's I like to be remembered for being a creative genius rather than the lackadaisical teacher that just lets you do whatever y'all wanted. <laughs> okay, well, uh, it's, it sounds like you're a little bit bitter because it's been quite a few years since, Chris, that you've been in high school. Uh, yeah, I'm definitely bitter. <laughs> uh, hey, Mr. Rob, it's, it's, it's Chris Rabb. Yeah, I, I know. That's why I called. Um, yeah, I was just thinking, you know, no, I didn't mean it in any way like that. I, I was actually trying to give you credit for, for, for helping us kind of realize what we were doing there. Yeah, I know, but you said it like as if I was just letting you do whatever you wanted. Uh, oh, yeah. I, mean, I didn't really mean that, though. I, I was just kind of saying that, that we had the freedom to kind of express ourselves creatively. Well, then why didn't you say it that way? Uh, uh, He's definitely calling you out right now, man. Yeah, and rightfully so, I guess. <laughs> Sorry, man. I, no, I, 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 I just want to say I appreciate you With, know. Now, Mr. Rob, was that the only reason that you called in was to to say that you're painted in the wrong light? There's got to be some other reason why you called on the show after all this time. You haven't talked to Rab in so long. Well, yeah, I was just saying, um, you know that. I did film some videos that were sort of similar to the Jackass <laughs> videos, hey. and I thought that. You know, maybe if if I don't, I know you say that you don't open the videos, but maybe you could open my video and just tell me if I'm if I'm moving in the right direction. <laughs> uh, okay, can you describe, Mr. Rob, some of the videos that you may have sent in to uh, Chris Rab? Well, see, I had found, I had actually, I was buddies with the pastor that you mentioned, and we both had these songs. 
that we have been wearing around town. Wait, wait, what time. did you say? These, the, what, what were you wearing? Uh, like the song, the song, song, song. Oh, like the Cisco. Yeah. The Cisco song, the mm-hmm. thong song. Yeah, that's the thing, and 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 I thought it was hilarious because, I mean, it ain't funny with young sexy bodies in them. It's funny when it's an old man and his <laughs> belly be sticking over the front. You can't even see his penis. You I know? mean, that is a good point to bring up that young sexy bodies are not funny and <laughs> flab and guts over private parts is what's actually funny. It's a lot funnier. That's what I'm saying. So, uh, so it, you you didn't even open the video. And I know it's been like 20 years, but I'm just saying, if you'd have opened the video, you probably could have seen that this would have been a lot funnier, and I would have been Johnny Knoxville. Okay, so uh, we want you to stay on the line, uh, Mr. Rob. Chris and I actually have the capability to pull up one of your VHS tapes right in front of us, and we're going to watch it and describe to you what we're seeing. Is that okay with you? Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Okay. Uh Gage is popping it in the VHS to the VCR player, and it looks like there's some opening credits right here that we're seeing. Okay. It says, Mr. Rob presents Mr. Rob. Okay, cool. This video's going great so far. And... Baby, 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 baby. Baby, 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 baby. Okay, uh, it's getting a little sensual. There's there's some kind of mu- music that's being played, yeah, Mr. Yeah, Rob. Yeah, you gotta um, you gotta you gotta fast forward that part. Baby, 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 I, 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 oh, baby, you know what? Baby, that might baby, not be the right video. I'm not sure. Okay, you're um, all oiled up. There's rose petals that yeah, are falling. You know what? Um, yeah, either fast forward or just baby, hit stop baby, on that because I mean I don't I don't think that's the one. That's that's, that's I must have said it in the wrong okay, one. Okay, Mr. Rob, you're touching yourself right now and looking yeah. in the mirror. Oh, no, no, that's no, no, baby, just stop. Baby, 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 baby. Hey, hey, hit stop on it. Okay, we're going to have to hit stop on that. Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm, that, that ain't the right one. I'm, I'm actually looking at the right one here at, at my house. Okay, and, um, okay well, why don't, why don't you FedEx that to the Jeremiah Wonder Studio, and uh, we'll watch it the next time Chris okay. is on, because uh, that was just you pleasuring yourself uh, in front of a mirror while Barry White played in Rose Petals. No, fall. that wasn't me. That was definitely not me in the tape. It said, <laughs> Mr. Uh, Rob presents Mr. Rob. Uh, I'm pretty uh, sure. I think, I mean, I think you've seen the R. Kelly tape. You know that was not him. <laughs> it's sort of the same thing. You're an R. Kelly defender on top of all of this? Yeah, you know that that was not him. I'm saying the same thing. They think that it's me in that tape. It's not me in that tape. Same way it ain't Mr. Robert Kelly. Okay, uh, well, we're going to have to let you go, Mr. Rob. I really appreciate you calling in. I think Chris okay, uh, heard so you loud and clear. If you do see my tape, though, that I will be the next Johnny Knoxville. <laughs> we, uh, we uh, Sure, we can't promise that necessarily. No, but... I'm, I mean, I'm holding you to that. I got a recording of it. Okay, okay, you have a recording. Chris and I will review it, and you'll be the next Hi, Johnny I'm Knoxville. Robbie Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. Okay, uh, he's gone. Uh, that was, <laughs> dude. That was weird. That was a uh, lot. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea he was oiling himself up and doing that kind of weird stuff. But apparently, that wasn't him in the video. I hear. I guess, but it said it clearly said Mr. Rob presents <laughs> Mr. Rob, yeah, yeah, which yeah. is the most yeah. self incriminating thing. <laughs> and he definitely presented. Uh, he definitely presented something. <laughs> oh very, my god! Very strange. <laughs> oh. I'm a little bit scarred because that was. My childhood, and now I have seen his uh, twig and berries. Yeah. And, uh... Oh, this is wild. Uh, I guess sometimes we open a portal on the show, and then we start getting calls after call. Oh, yeah. Um, your buddy, uh, Steve-O, is actually calling in to the show right now. Uh, oh. Hello, Steve-O? Hey. Hey. Uh, <clears throat> hey, what, hey, what's up, man? <laughs> Yo, dude, what's going on? Dude, what's up, Chris? How you doing, man? <laughs> He's sound a little under the weather. What's yeah, it? Dude, I got a, dude, I got a cold right now, man. <laughs> yeah, dude, you rock. Dude, no. <laughs> yeah, dude, you rock. <laughs> yeah, what's happening? Dude, how you been, brother? <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> dude, dude, so do you, do you want to get together soon and like film something? Yeah, let's uh, <laughs> let's do it. I, dude, I, I found this new guy that we got to put in one of the videos. <laughs> oh, yeah, what's up with him? <laughs> uh, it's actually our graphic arts teacher from high school. He, dude, get out. <laughs> Here, is it Mr. Rob? Yeah, 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 yeah. Dude, I love Mr. Rob. <laughs> dude, oh, it's ridiculous. He's got uh, plenty of oil that he can bring along with the. Uh... Dude, well, dude, we'll, we'll get we'll get the 
a slip and slide going, and we'll do a slip and slide bowling. How does that sound? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll help Mr. Yeah. Rob in yeah. bowling pins. That'll be great. <laughs> Hell yeah. Nice. That sounds good, dude. All right, brother. I just want to check in real quick. I've been a guest on Jeremiah Wonders, too, and uh, dude, Hell yeah. had a great time. You should ask Jeremiah about the time that I, uh, during Zach's talk, told a story about my dog eating my cum. Yeah, ew. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, dude. See All you right, later, brother. bro. Later. <laughs> yeah, man, we get a lot of calls on this show. <laughs> it's pretty Dude, wild. dogs eating cum. That's that was his sack stock story. Uh, we talked about. That's sick. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty nasty. That was dog likes his cum. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> that's sick. Guys, this is your last chance. It's your last chance. Your last chance to go to Monday.com, okay? Do you want a free two week trial? Get it. Take advantage of this opportunity. Do you want to save crazy amounts of time at work? <laughs> nope. Then get out of here. Monday.com is not for you. If you want to be purposely inefficient at work, then this ad's not for you. Because Monday.com don't mess around, dog. They create that f- workflow. <laughs> if you're a normal human and you want to make your job easier, your life easier, make your wedding, your everything, your kids, your family, all that stuff easier, Monday.com. <laughs> Unlocking that key to greatness and workflows. <laughs> Monday.com is an easy project management tool. Do you like being managed? Do you like tools? Do you like projects? <laughs> Get it. Dude, you are going to be hooked at customizing workflows to make your time more efficient. I know I am. I'm an addict. So right now, go to monday.com slash wonder. Yes, that's monday.com slash wonder. And get that free 14-day trial from your boy hooking it up. Limited time only, so go over there. Use that exact link to get those secrets. You like secrets? Huh? Like promos? Guess what? Monday.com slash wonder is for you. For you. For you. All right, guys. Now let's get back into enjoying this episode of Jeremiah Wonders with my pal, Chris Rabb himself. Uh, Let's get into this next segment. This is Fanning Out. Fanning Out. Questions from fans. All right. I reached out to all you people on the interwebs and uh, said if you could ask Chris Rabb any question, any question at all, what would it be? And you sent in some great ones. Uh, this first one comes from uh, Instagram user at Meth Syndicate, friend of the show, great T-shirt company. Check them out. Did Kiki ever get his hunk of meat? <laughs> Dude, Kiki got the the biggest hunk of meat. There, were, we found this tuna can that was like the, the most industrial sized tuna can ever, and we uh, and we we fed her. Just the entire thing. We just opened it up and gave it to her and let her just go to town. And it was just like she was basically eating till she was sick. <laughs> now, who is that your personal cat or was that Bam's cat? No, like, yeah, that was Bam's was parents' Bam, cat. Bam's like, parents' cat. Yeah, okay. they, um, its actual name was Whiskers. Mm-hmm. And the thing was, Phil would call it like Kitty Kitty. And he'd be like, hey, Kitty Kitty, come here, Kitty Kitty. And then so we we turned that, we shortened that it to this weird. Into- Ah, oh, come on, little Kiki, and then <laughs> it just became this this dumb thing we were doing, and and uh, and and she looked hungry, so we uh, we wanted to feed her. <laughs> Isn't it funny how like whenever you talk to pets, your voice changes? Like, yeah, ridiculous. yeah, oh yeah. Like no one's ever like. Kiki, I have something hey, to say to you. Kiki, uh, Kiki, <laughs> <laughs> would you like a hunk of meat? Yes. Would you like some of this? <laughs> I believe this is your favorite, if I do recall. Yeah, and I, and I love how, like, in your mind, you're being cute to this animal, this yeah. cat, and the cat's probably just looking at you like this guy's an idiot. Yeah. Same. Yeah. yeah same with like the baby voices and the yeah, kid voices. Yeah. Like they're like I, like I, you'd probably be a serial killer if you're talking to your kid like a normal way, like yeah, Donovan. <laughs> hey, come here, Donovan. <laughs> Is it snack time, Donovan? You got a little poo poo in your panties. Did you, have a, uh, did you drop a big poop in your diaper? <laughs> Daddy's gonna clean it for you right now. <laughs> I bet you there is that awkward ass dude that can't the, be the, soft at yeah, all. Re- he refuses. He's <laughs> yeah. like hard uh, all the time. This goes against my manhood. Yes, I have to train my son to be the strongest in his <laughs> line of blood. <laughs> Uh, this one comes from, uh, at Trevor on a lot of people want to, uh, ask about this, ask him about when he shit himself while running full speed. Greatest thing I've ever seen. How did that 
come about because uh, I actually uh, I rewatched it this morning <laughs> <laughs> with breakfast myself with, yeah. <laughs> with breakfast <laughs> and uh, basically. Uh, the 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 stunt was basically the, the it was based off a of George Carlin bit, right? Yeah. So um yeah, so when we were growing up, Jess Margera, Bam's older brother, he's basically like my older brother too. I'm I have two older brothers as well. And the, and so I you know, I was born in nineteen eighty, but they, these guys were like seventy five and whatever. So that that era of stuff, I kinda learned a lot about things when I was way younger than most. Yeah. You know, um, I saw Faces of Death when I was seven years old. <laughs> oh you know what goodness. I mean? <laughs> so it was like saw too much too soon yeah, kind yeah. of thing. So if all the senators out there that want to blame television for it, uh, you're right. I'm I'm pretty nuts because I saw too much. <laughs> I'm one of the products. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um but so I would I I you know, I got a hold of things a little bit earlier than should be, and I think probably nine or ten years old, Jess Margera had shown me a bunch of George Carlin stuff and uh, a, a bunch of the the videos, you know, his stand up specials, and um, and I had listened to some of them as well, and and so I became a big fan of George Carlin because of Jess Margera, and we would just watch all of these bits, you know, for all the years, and and I kind of I, I he was more my teacher than some of my teachers for sure, and and I feel like I just paid attention to what he was, and he made a lot of sense to me. Well, he's pretty prolific. He would yeah. not only talk like normal you know observational humor but also political like yeah his range was crazy They're very bright individual yeah. and uh and and that was what kind of influenced me to question authority question things and just always be kind of thinking in that direction and and so anyway jess and i were watching one of the one of his specials and on it he says, you know, I know things you never see. You never see a seven foot redheaded Asian man with freckles or whatever. And he's like, and you never see a man taking a shit while running full speed. And, and right as we're watching that, Jess just looked at me and was like, rap, would you do that? And I, I was like, fuck, I'll do that. You know? And, and then that became this thing of like, all right, I got to do it. You know, now I, I have to do this. And, and Jackass came, uh, Tremaine and Knoxville came to film and, and they were like, dude, are you going to do this bit? You know, like, and I was like, yeah, I'm definitely going to do it. And uh, so we were trying to figure out when and how to do it. And basically got wind that, you know, MTV wasn't going to air it. So like we, yeah. we, we, you know, we go and, and we film this, this bit and we have it and MTV is not going to air it because back then, and I remember this in the contract, it said basically cannot air spreadable butt cheeks so my rape bit from earlier is out the window right. and, and i'm losing bits <laughs> left and right i'm trying to come up with quality entertainment for the youth and they keep scrapping it cutting my legs out from underneath me <laughs> exactly yeah i just uh I, I had an obsession with shit when i was younger uh, i mean i threw shit on the lockers i got kicked out of high school but uh but so i was just obsessed with it. i thought it was hilarious like i was like well, you know everybody is so like uptight about it you know you think about parents and people and they were just like uptight about that and i and i always thought to myself this guy that's the principal and he's like oh listen here christian rab like you need to listen to me and do this whatever i was like this guy takes a shit like when he goes home he's just sitting there like <laughs> like squeezing out a dump and i i, he's I just, just like me <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah so i couldn't i couldn't not think of that kind of stuff and i always found that so funny like thinking about like the hottest girl in the school and her having like splatter shit diarrhea was like it just levels the playing field you know, sure. <laughs> you know sure. what I mean? and you just you don't feel like anyone's better or worse than you cuz you know you're at home doing the same thing and so i always thought that shit was hilarious i found it so funny and and so that became a thing. And I think that's why when Jess saw that bit, he was like, Rab's the perfect guy for yeah. this, you know? And, and so, uh, so we set out on a mission to make it happen. And the fastest, uh, most effective way to do it would be to take some x lax and get things running. Um, because I figured if you had a, if you had a solid turd, like how would it, how would you get that out while you're running? Yeah, exactly. Cause you clamp up and, and uh, so we went and got a box of X-Lax and I'm looking at the thing and I'm, and it says like, take two to four daily. And I was like, what the hell is that going to do? I was like, I should just take the whole fucking thing, you know? And, and it was just these slabs of chocolate. And so there was not, there was nine on so each like, this slab. Is easy. Yeah. I was like, I love chocolate. Yeah. <laughs> so I ate both things, the whole thing. So it's 18. Yeah. 
18 pieces of this x lac and uh and i'm sitting there and waiting and jess and bam were like dude do you got a shit you got a shit and i'm like i don't not really like i don't know you know and it's about it's almost like an hour later and so then i drank just this little bit of coffee and it got like, everything oh, immediately. Yeah. Immediately, it was like, oh, oh, I was we're like, doing it. oh we're my god, let's go, let's go, let's go. Yeah. And it's like, get the camera, and Bam's like, hold on, wait. I'm like, no, we can't wait. I gotta go. And I'm, I'm like, because well, at this point in time, I had been like living in a jockstrap. I literally, I would go to the You're bar. You're waiting for that moment. I would go to the bar in, a, in just the jockstrap and hang out because we were filming for Jagged, so everyone thought, oh shit, these guys are crazy. And we kind of had carte blanche in our hometown to just. Do it, come and go as we please. Wow. So I would hang out in the bar drinking in just a jock strap, you know? And it was like, it was hilarious. That's and, just, uh, you know, <laughs> that's one of our rap. locals, Rap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Don't mind him. He's just a man in a jock strap drinking alone. <laughs> he knocks, he like the tall, cool lager. The, uh, so, so I'm sitting there and uh, I'm already in the jock strap. I'm ready to go. And we get outside. He, he bam, jumps on a skateboard and is just filming along with it. And I get got down in that like that runner's stance or whatever, you know, <laughs> and just took off running. And it literally just burst out. I had to hold so tight so that I wouldn't shit myself. Yeah. As I was going and, and like and I was hoping I wouldn't shit myself before so I could let it go as I'm running. And as I'm running, all I did was just let go. And then it just like, boom. And then it was a beautiful moment. I <laughs> yeah. just let go. <laughs> That's the lesson this for like you. It's like the inside life. the just actor's studio. Go. Now, <laughs> the moment that you pooped yourself while running, what was going through your mind? Well, James, I... Uh, <laughs> I uh, not a whole lot going through my mind there. Just, uh, just try not to uh, shit out my asshole. Until you let go is what this says. Is that? <laughs> <laughs> and then I let go. <laughs> <And> then <laughs> epic music starts playing, yeah. <laughs> and I started running. <laughs> it's so good, dude. And there's so much more to that story too. And I had told this before, but um, right after that, so when when the shit explodes all over, it came out the front, and there was like shit on the jock strap everywhere, everywhere, covered. And as soon as you stop running, it smelled so horrible. Oh, I bet. Like sh human shit out of water is some of the smelliest stuff that exists. Like yeah. maybe like vomit LA, trash but... water might be where, but but oh yeah yeah you you get it <laughs> yeah you right yeah, outside I'm, the studio yeah, here you smell it, you smell it on the streets <laughs> yeah it's wild. So I'm like, oh, my God, I got to clean off. I got to get this cleaned off. So I go to the side of Bam's house to clean it off, and I pull out the hose, and I'm spraying down, and I'm spraying all this, and, and I can't really get it because there's just chunks of shit all up in my nutsack, and, I, and I, I spray it right up my butthole. Spread my butthole. I bend over completely, spread my butthole, and spray it right up my butthole, and I'm looking through my legs, and his neighbor is standing there <laughs> With his like six year old daughter, just holding hands with her and looking straight up my asshole, <laughs> and I'm like, I'm like, dude, like, uh, I'm like, oh my god, but I had to get it all off and take the whole jock strap off and spray that down because I was covered, and so I walked away, just hand over dick and trying to cover my butt, like. Hey, sorry, <laughs> sorry, and you know, I'm like, I scarred this little girl for life. Looked straight up the butthole. Now every time she hears, bow now now, she's like yeah. sh shaking, <laughs> so like exactly. foaming at the mouth. Like, ah. <laughs> takes me back to a horrible, takes horrible me memory. Back. Takes me right back to that leather Cheerio. Dude, that's so that leather <laughs> Cheerio. That might be the grossest name I've ever heard for a butthole before. <laughs> Um, this is <laughs> underscore at man zero lay. How many stunts did you actually get paid for? Because because <laughs> you get because basically, as I, I've heard from Steve-O and the other guys, is you would pitch stuff and then there'd be footage like well, like what you just said, yeah. where MTV or whatever would be like, no, this isn't going in. And like, how many did you? I guess like get on versus the amount that you didn't film i guess is what i think what the question is what they're asking well i think the good thing for us was that stuff like that they're shitting at full speed what we kind of had this built-in situation where we had already had a following from the cky videos mm -hmm. so the stuff that didn't make it onto mtv i was like this is the extreme bonus yeah, content yeah that yeah. went to cky3 cky4 like so all that extra stuff went to the videos that's perfect um, and a lot of the things that i ended up doing 
wouldn't make it onto Jackass than they would make it onto the CKY. So I'm definitely known a lot more for CKY than for Jackass. And I kind of, you know, went a different direction at a point. But, um, but yeah, the the extra stuff there, we were lucky enough that it would it would end up on CKY. That's like a perfect safety net. It's like, yeah, ah, if they don't like it, then we got this over here. Yeah, yeah. That's great. <laughs> uh, this is an interesting question. Um, at Darren Squidge uh, 2 on Instagram, do you still watch old footage of Jackass to CKY, or have you put that behind you? Hmm. Um. I, I don't know that I would put it behind me. I think it's something that I'm always, you know, a part of or proud of or, yeah. or psyched on having done and, and, you know, experienced. And what I'll say about watching it um, during the time. Is it weird to, to look back and watch some of this stuff? Yeah, it's Does funny it feel like a different person or does absolutely. it still feel like this? Yeah, yeah, it's definitely, it feels like a different person for, for many reasons. I think at the time when we were filming, we'd be filming so much that I wasn't watching that stuff just because we were out filming and we were, we were so committed to like, just getting, getting, I hate the word content because that's what they say nowadays, but we were just trying to get footage and get stuff to keep adding to it. And so we weren't sitting around watching it, but in recent years, when something will come up on YouTube or something will come along, it's kind of fun to go down memory lane and, and yeah. take a look at it and be like, damn, you know, I remember where I was at this point in my life. And that was funny. And, and, uh, and some of the bits, you know, because still to this day we we started doing it because we made each other laugh and still to this day they're all my buddies and i'll go back and watch something they did and it's hilarious and you're like i can't deny that it holds up and it's yeah. funny you know yeah it's one of those things where i still will watch like those old jackass videos and the cky stuff and and i'm like it's surprising the amount of like the stunts and different stuff that still hold up because yeah. like the core of it is like it's a group of friends trying to make each other laugh and yeah. it's just, like you know there's different I feel like over the years there's different like cycles of you know different shows that you guys may have influenced and stuff like that like right now and Practical Jokers is a big show yeah yeah and it's a you know a much tamer yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah version yeah, yeah, yeah. of yeah. kind of you know <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what uh, yeah that show is funny though yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, and I think as far as putting it behind me because I think people wondered that with me because i i did go a different direction i i ended up getting sober and and just kind of take care of myself and my yeah, life because yeah. i was kind of running off the rails there so i don't i don't put it behind me as if like that's not me you know because some people i think try right. to separate themselves from those things and go oh i don't do that anymore and i move on like i'm still the dude that thinks shit is funny right yeah. and i'm still the dude who could potentially put on a jock strap and go do that i i just at this point i'm i have i work on different things I, i'm a camera guy at this point and and um and that's what i do for a day job and then i have the podcast but uh, but yeah, I wouldn't put it past me to go do it because all that stuff is still hilarious. Yeah, I'm still that dude. <laughs> now you said you you mentioned a couple times you went in a different direction. Is that what you're talking about with with getting sober and like uh, and starting to do like more your personal own filming and camera work and your own kind of projects? Is that? Yeah, I mean, I had always done little projects, always did mm -hmm. little skits and stuff, and we're always filming little things. And and uh, along the way, you're always doing stuff aside from from the group um and i've you know continued doing that but yeah i think as far as going a different direction for me it was kind of i needed to take care of myself i, I once you get a little notoriety and um you're no longer just that kid from a small town it kind of freaked me out a little bit and i was in a dangerous place with drugs and alcohol and so i had to sort of uh become a recluse a little bit to mm -hmm. to to get better and to get healthy was there a and, tipping point that that you were like okay i'm i've reached this place where i need to get sober just like for my own well-being and and all that well yeah i mean basically my life would have, had fallen apart you mm -hmm. know i had to like financially things were an issue um i had to sell my house i had to kind of figure out what was i going to do for a living um jackass and all that stuff i i wasn't one of the guys that got rich from that so it so it became obvious to me that i was gonna have to have a job i sure uh you know i have a college degree and all that and i was you know assuming i'd have to at some point get a job so it was what direction do i go to try to get back on track in terms of that and, it, and it's it's a hard recovery process in terms of 
if this is who you were for so long, you know, I, I, when you're when you're typing up your resume and you say guy who shits on his own ass, <laughs> it doesn't really uh, it doesn't really translate. Trust me, I have life skills. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I get it. I get it. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so it, so it was sort of a hard transition back into sure. where I'm headed, and I think that's what kind of landed me in the production world because. It made sense. I had been on a set. I had been around cameras my whole life. I've been doing all this for as long as I have. So it made sense to go that direction. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so that was where I kind of veered off into that. And it was it was more so for, for my own uh sanity, health, and uh well being is kind of where I went that different direction. Nice. Um you're good buddies with uh Ryan Dunn, mm -hmm. who uh Obviously, I'm a fan of, and uh, many of my listeners yeah. and viewers are. Uh, this comes from Baby Doll Bethy uh, hey, on Instagram. Baby Doll Bethy. Baby Doll Bethy. <laughs> um, uh, do you have a favorite uh, Ryan Dunn, maybe like an off-camera memory? Uh, and uh, and they want you to elaborate on that if you've got anything. Yeah, like, I mean, I, there's so many. Uh, yeah, I mean, you're friends with them for so many years. Yeah, I, I, I like I said, I, I think I met Ryan when I was 13. He was 16, um, and uh, we we have so many crazy situations uh, together. But I always think back to this one moment, and I don't really share this because it, it's almost like inside joke stuff where it might have just been funny to us, but. Uh, uh, and and we just kept going off and we were a little delirious and we were in this boat in venice italy and we were like just dry uh, just cruising around in this boat like the sun was coming up it was like this just we were i think we were you know we were we were on one and uh, <laughs> and but we were sitting there laughing and, and we kept doing this thing like we were thinking about how funny it would be if like the most ghetto dude did like regular stuff so like if if like his like it, like if this ghetto guy's boys were like yo man we're trying to go to the club you want to come and he'd be like nah man I'm trying to stay home take care of my motherfucking parakeet motherfucker you know so like we were like he's like damn man I got these fucking boogies up in my nose like him you know, so we kept doing this like back and forth yeah, to each yeah, other yeah. of like just this stupid thing of like this what would this hard ass dude say that would be like that would be so lame you know it was like yeah, yeah, yeah. yo man make me a fucking lunchables man i'm like i'm trying to fucking eat some fucking lunchables motherfucker you know and you're like it was like the hardest ghettoest dude doing little baby shit yeah the softest stuff yeah and i just remember that always like we were sitting in this boat like dying laughing and throwing things back and forth to each other just about what that scenario dude oh, those long know, riff yeah. sessions with buddies are the best <laughs> yeah so so i think about that a lot because that that was just a moment with him and i that was that was really fun um but we had you know lots of those uh lots of those moments throughout the years and and you know and i and i was close with ryan um, long before CKY was a thing and long before Jackass was a thing. So, so there's, there's a, just a deep connection there in terms of like, you know, when he, when he died, it, it was, it was, uh, you know, it was like, I lost my brother. Yeah. So, um, and it still is like tough when, if, if you really think about it, but I try to stay in a place of being positive and remembering like all the funny stuff and good things. And, and some days it gets tough, but um, Spike Jones was actually a, a huge help. Um, and I always kind of give him credit for this because he was the first guy to make me laugh after Ryan died. And, uh, it was sort of along the same lines of this. He, he came up and, you know, and I was just sad and we we're at the, uh, service and he was like, Hey man, how's it going? Whatever hug. And then he's like, He's like, dude, I was thinking about this funny ass thing that Ryan did, whatever. And and he's like, and he just said it, and I kind of just started laughing, thinking about it. And he's like, like, what do you, you know, what do you remember? And 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 he came in this positive way, and it got me laughing, and it got me thinking about like all these great times and and all that. And and it was just that thing that made that shift for me. Yeah. Um. Obviously, I still went through a bunch more for time after that, but but it really got me in the headspace of thinking about the the good funny moments and all the great stuff so you could you could carry that with you and hold on to that as you move forward sure you have to celebrate the positive yeah. moments yeah and and really yeah try to dwell on that otherwise you know like yeah 
Yeah. Like 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 I've had I have had other friends die from drugs and all that other stuff too. And um and you know, and then you have, you have your grandparents pass, but that's like a natural thing. And mm-hmm. so it's really easy to think about the positive things with your grandparents because you go, Yeah, that's yeah. natural. Everyone dies and at these at great some visits, point. like all yeah. these great memories. Yeah. And, but with Ryan it was this tragic ending. So it was like, I don't know that I'll ever be able to get to that. And 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 Spike was able to to kind of get me to that. The first one to get me to that, and then was able to stay. And, you know, and and we're we're fucking sick fucks. So throughout Ryan's service and Zach's service, we were making horribly morbid jokes. And, I mean, and, you know, and, and you ha- you had to. You have to, man. That's because, a way of healing. You know, yeah. if we I've lost some comedian buddies, and you know, like the jokes and stuff that we we say behind closed doors <laughs> is like a healing mechanism. Or <laughs> you know, is. it's really messed up. It is. But it's, it's like That's kind of how we deal yeah. with it. Yeah, it is. And yeah, yeah, and 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 obviously, like I knew you, your your bud who passed not too long ago, a little bit, and uh, and yeah, and it's and you, and you get it. It's just I don't know. It's tough, but. But if, but you also go to the headspace of thinking like, they would want me to joke of course. in this dark ass way right now. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. that's that's yeah, the inner yeah. comedian is yeah, like, yeah, no, yeah. they would. That's this is what they would want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, there's some people who were asking about this, and we can touch on it briefly, uh, or we can move on. But um, I think people are, you know, worried a little bit about Bam where he's at right now with stuff has how's he doing have you talked to him recently um i probably haven't talked to him in maybe a week and a half Mm -hmm. two weeks yeah um so last time i saw him we went out to lunch um a couple weeks ago and uh he that was right before he uh got in some trouble at that hotel there and uh it was the day before and so, you know, I don't know. I, I I think that there's moments where I can see uh, Bam, and then there's moments where I can, or a lot of a lot of moments of the addiction mm-hmm. that are kind of presenting themselves. But then when I get to hang out with him and just talk with him and uh, and just kind of hang with him f- from back in the day, then I just see the dude I know. And, uh, and, you know, and there, there's some, some mental health stuff that's going on too. It's not just all addiction stuff, but, um, my personal feelings are in order to address those mental health things, uh, we need to clear out some of the chemicals that, that are, uh, interfering with a proper diagnosis sure. and, uh, and trying to see, you know, how do we get, you know, how, how does he get back to a healthy version of himself? And, uh, me being a part of uh recovery and doing that i'm you know i'm coming up on 10 years here clean and sober and uh congrats and man that's awesome thanks man it's it's been an awesome life and i have a good life as a result of it um and i've i had all these fears when i was getting sober like oh maybe i won't be funny maybe i won't be able to do any of this stuff like maybe i'm just going to be this weird dude that wants it's like a recluse doesn't want to be around anybody but i i found the complete opposite happened and i finally i got myself back and I got to be out, be a goofball, you know, enjoy life and and uh, and meet good people and attract good people into my life. And and that has been, you know, it, like recovery has paid me back tenfold versus how much I'm if I'm helping others. And 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 I and I do and I and I work I work a good program and I do help others. But when I look at it, I'm like, what I get, the rewards that I get from this thing are so you know immense that I could never repay it. And when I look at Bam and when we, when, when I see where he's at now, I know that he's struggling and that he, uh, you know, he, he wants to be better, but I, I don't think he knows how to get there. And I think the biggest thing is him wanting to try to do it somebody else's way mm-hmm. and listen to what somebody else has to say and how they're doing it. And, from what I hear from the from a few weeks ago, after I saw him, like I hear good things. I hear that he's down with another guy at a different place, and uh, and good things are coming of that. Um, so, what I, I, I'm always there for him. It's just I don't want to interfere with yeah. it as well, and I want to let that process take the take its its uh, it's the direction that it needs to. Because sometimes with that stuff, it's it's difficult you find yourself in a place of enabling if you're too involved in in the beginning of the healing process. Hmm. And so I think 
someone like me who's close like that, you know, I'm here if you need me, but I don't want to be like bailing everything out, you know? Yeah. And, and I'm going to so, let you kind of do your thing for the moment Yeah, and I'll be here for when you need me on that next right. part and, of the journey. And the yeah, same yeah. thing happened with me when I was getting sober is like, I kind of, I kind of, uh, it, it worked better for me to have a bunch of strangers around me where I couldn't manipulate them and I couldn't sort it all out how I wanted it to be. I had to listen to a stranger go, shut up, sit down, do this. And you're like, oh, shit. Okay, I'm in a spot where I can't, I can't manipulate this thing. I can't get what I want. I can't, you know, just slip, slither through this. I have to shut up, sit down, and listen and, and do what they're saying and, and go in that direction. And as I did that, that, cha that changed my life. And it was hard as hell to want to listen to the way someone else said to do it because I thought I had all the answers. And I realized at that moment, all of my answers got me to that point. So maybe I don't have all the answers. So maybe I do have to listen to somebody else. Maybe they do have good suggestions. And as I became open and willing to do that, that's what got my, made my life better. So hopefully he'll get to the place of willingness, of willing to try it somebody else's way, listening, being open-minded to that. And, and I love him. He's my brother. And I don't, you know, it kills me to see him that way. It kills me to see April and Phil having to watch all that stuff. But, um, but, uh, you know, I just, uh, I'm hoping for the best and I'm staying positive with that. And I, and, you know, and I think that, that if, uh, if he becomes willing to do it somebody else's way, then amazing things happen. We have a bunch of friends that, uh, that have, have taken this path and, and life is really good for, for all of us that, that have chosen. And that. I think that's good for anybody who's listening or watching this show right now is, is that, you know. This is your proven example that it can work and that you, uh, you know, can kind of implement a structure for someone else to kind of look at, like to be there for your friends, let them go through their recovery phase. And then long term is like, let's, you know, make the best out of this and be positive. Which, yeah. Yeah. Which that rolls us right into our next segment. Uh, the kindness challenge. <laughs> So every week I challenge the listeners as well as myself to do something nice for somebody out of the kindness of their heart. It doesn't matter how big it is. doesn't matter how small as long as they are contributing something positive to society. And people nice. email in letters of uh, ways that they've uh, they've uh, accepted the kindness challenge and, and pass it on to somebody else. So I read a letter and what I think that their voice might sound like, and then we kind of uh, <laughs> <laughs> analyze it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and uh, maybe uh, share something that we maybe have done nice for, <laughs> for somebody recently. So okay. uh, I'm going to share this. Um, this first line gives me a tip of how to read it a little bit. Uh, hello, friend. My name is AJ Haygarth, and I live in Ontario, Canada. Hey. <laughs> Recently, they have been doing major construction in my neighborhood. They are replacing water mains and sewers because of this. They plugged all the sewers with a kind of thick cloth to protect from stones and debris falling in. This construction company kind of shit the bed, though, because there was a major rainstorm that everyone knew was coming, and this construction company neglected to remove the thick cloth. My neighborhood turned into a lake. I took some pictures of it because it was really crazy. A few days later, I saw a renovation van at the house of an elderly couple that lives at the end of my street. I didn't think of it at the time, but they have one of those split-level houses with a garage that has a driveway that slopes downward so their entire basement was flooded with water. So much damage. I decided to go over and talk to them, and I found out that they were actually having some problems with their insurance company. I asked if the pictures that I took would be of any help to them. They said that would help a lot, so I offered to email them the pictures. Well, being an elderly couple, they didn't have an email address. They actually don't even have a computer. I still wanted to help, so I took my phone to a local grocery store where you can print pictures from your phone, and I had a couple copies made and dropped it off in their mailbox. I saw them a couple days later, and they were so very grateful. Ever since then, whenever I see them drive by, they smile and give me a big wave. Yours in kindness, AJ Haygarth. Nice. Yeah, pretty nice deed, right? Yeah, that's a good thing, man. Yeah, dude. Um, I, I love hearing that kind of stuff, you know, especially and not to go there, but especially with the way things go in the media and the things you hear about so much, it's nice to hear people kind of just helping one another. Yeah, like lending a helping hand yeah. to each other. Um, yeah, I uh, I did this uh, for my mom this weekend, which I was happy to do because uh, she's always like, anytime I go, I went home to Kansas City this weekend and uh, she always is like, you know, make sure to 
take care of all my meals and stuff. Just being a mom, whenever I yeah. come back home, wanting to take care of me and just uh, cleaning your skivvies. Yeah, you know this. The, <laughs> she, I mean, she loves it when I bring home dirty laundry. She loves it. She's <laughs> loves like, oh yeah, I'll do. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm getting right to that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, I uh, sh- uh, we stopped at the gas station. And she gave me her credit card to uh, fill her car up with gas, and I sneakily uh pulled mine out and uh yeah. you know i did that thing yeah. uh, like where i put on my card and then uh went out to barbecue and I, I i got the bill for that and uh it was a nice for me like to give back to my mom because she's obviously given so much to me over yeah. years and still and this is just how the kindness challenge works paying it forward of course at the end of the trip she snuck money into <laughs> you know yeah, like yeah, before yeah, i yeah, left yeah. i'm like then no i was stop gonna, being so kind stop being, i was being i was kind. gonna you're trying to out kind me right <laughs> yeah. now so yeah oh man did you have uh have you done something recently where you're like all right this guy this would call qualify as a a kindness challenge um yeah i mean i i, I think um on a regular basis obviously like i'm working with people in uh, in recovery but but then uh on top of that my wife and i we you know we do nice things for each other as well on a daily basis and and kind of those things where you're you're sneaking and like i know she needed something so i got it and went yeah. and, or, and bought it and organized and do that stuff but then uh, my neighbors, I was thinking about this. So my neighbors, uh, they they went away for a few days uh, at the end of last week. And they, you know, the the one girl, it's a married couple as well. She, she texted me, hey, do you think you could take care of our cat while we're gone? So I'm like, yeah, sure, sure, no problem. But um, what really isn't discussed between any of us is they they have the meanest cat in the world. <laughs> so 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 like when I go over there to to feed the cat and clean the shit of this cat, I I like you you basically open the door, somersault your way into the kitchen, try to not get attacked, put the food in the thing, like hurry it up, hurry it up, and the whole time it's like. <laughs> You know, it's like, it's crazy. Like, it's full-blown swatting at you and hissing at you. And then I'm, like, over there scooping the shit and piss out of the out of the God, litter. I'm helping you I'm out. Like, you, you son of a bitch. <laughs> it's just like, <laughs> I'm like, I'm being kind. You know, <laughs> I'm trying to do this for you. This is how I'm rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so I take care of this snotty little cat, um, y- you know, even though. Uh, the conditions are. Yeah. Optimal. Yeah, it's not this nice furry little. It's not Kiki for any yeah, for any yeah, stretch yeah. of the matter. That that cat was like the nicest cat in the world. It was so mellow. This cat is trying to kill me every time I walk into their place. <laughs> That's awesome. Well, that definitely qualifies. Uh, email your letters in to jeremiahwonders at gmail dot com, uh, and I will read them on the show. And don't feel like some people are like, I feel weird sending in these letters. I feel like I'm being bra- like I'm bragging about being kind, but the amount of positive response when i go out on the road and people tell me in person how much that these letters mean to them it's it's awesome so keep sending those in guys and we're going to close out the show with this final segment called sax talk oh Oh. all right (laughs) the way you just lick that (laughs) thing you got me licking it Mm. whoa oh slow it down all right so chris rab is gonna tell a uh story of a sexual encounter while i play some (laughs) sweet sweet saxophone along with it so whenever you're ready i will follow you Maybe go with the uh, maybe do chris chris rab voice okay chris rab voice (laughs) hey how are you (laughs) <laughs> all right so here i was we're talking about sex talk here oh man this is embarrassing um so yeah i've never had sex <laughs> still a virgin uh <laughs> well okay so here it was oklahoma city yes exactly it was a uh late friday night I had had one too many Jäger bombs. <laughs> this was back in the days of drinking and drugs. And women. Well, I found myself uh, cuddled up next to a bar, sipping on a fine bourbon. Not really. I was probably drinking like a Michelob Ultra. 
And a uh, lovely lady from the town that nobody uh, introduced me to. She introduced herself. She said, hey, uh, you want to go have sex in the car? And I thought, nothing more comfortable than having sex in a car. Let's do it. So uh, there we are in the car. It's getting hot and steamy in there. Oh, yeah. Ah, touch me right there. Mm. Lots of moaning and groaning. Only on my part, because I could never find the G-spot. But what happened was, I looked behind me into the back seat, and I saw she had a motorcycle helmet back there. Weird. She's a biker chick. Okay, I can get down with that. But I thought, what better way than to have her put the helmet on and give me fellatio? I'm a taker, not a giver. That's how I like to do things. So anyway, she's got the helmet on and she's uh, going down south. But we were in the Midwest, so who would have known? Steamy, steamy, hot and steamy. Anyway, she's down there licking up things and biting on things and kissing things and whatever's happening, and all of a sudden, the blue and reds come. You know the blue and reds. The police. The cops, the pigs, they were there. <laughs> and uh, I still had a boner. It was steamy, and as I uh, wiped away some of the steam from the glass, I looked and saw the cops looking directly at me. They wanted me to get out of the car, and I thought, oh, this is probably not a good thing to do, but I'm going to do it anyway. So I got out of the car with a boner, pants around my ankles, and uh, I tried to pull them up and zip them up, and, you know, it was... Almost catching the uh, the old dong in the zipper thing there, so that was that was nerve wracking. And uh, she got out of the car as well with the biker helmet on. So we stood there and uh, thought we were going to get arrested for public in, uh, indecency or something like that. Once again, I found myself nearly becoming a sex offender, and uh, they decided, hey. Aren't you that guy, Chris Rab from Jackass Viva La Bam? And I thought, hey, I am that guy, Jackass from Chris Rab Viva La wherever. And uh, so they uh, they thought it was funny. They they decided, ha ha ha, that's that's hilarious. What you're doing there with that motorcycle helmet blowjob thing? And uh, they decided that we should go. So we got back in her Camaro and we peeled out of there. Of course she drove a Camaro. What else would she drive? And now that's been sexy time. Ooh. <laughs> That was awesome. <laughs> oh, yeah. Were you turned on? <laughs> oh, dude. The sax is hiding my protruding <laughs> uh, thingy right now. Yeah, that, 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 that little horn you got over there has really got me in the mood. Let's just say I didn't need a neck strap while I was playing. <laughs> <laughs> it was just <laughs> levitating. Perched. Perched, perched on a show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, my favorite description was while she was licking it, biting it, and <laughs> whatever you said. I was like, this is very specific. <laughs> Lapping it up. Uh-huh.
<laughs> awesome, dude. Well, man, thank you so much for coming on the show. Is there anything you want to plug uh, before we head out? Uh, well, I have a uh, bathroom break podcast, which is an awesome podcast. I've guested on it. Definitely check out uh, Rab himself's bathroom break podcast on YouTube. Awesome show. Yeah, it's uh, YouTube, Apple, and yeah, Jeremiah's on there. And then I have another thing I'd love to talk about is uh, my nonprofit that is called hope the number four today.org and uh we're doing a bunch of projects down in haiti and right now we're starting another one where we're raising some funds to build a secondary school for some kids in the town Rensemble in haiti so uh hope the number four today.org you can see some of the information about that stuff so that's okay well if you guys are wondering about you know this week what would be a good thing to, you know, be do kind. for the kindness challenge? <laughs> hope for today. Yeah. Hope for today dot org. Go check that out. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, dude, loved hanging with you, brother. <laughs> Thanks yeah. so much for coming on, man. Thanks for having me on, yeah, man. It's man. been awesome. Yeah. And uh Yeah, thanks, Mr. Rob. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh, did uh <laughs> Mr. Rob, yeah, yeah, what's up? Mr. Rob wanted to call back. Oh, Mr. Rob, you wanted to close out the show. Is there anything else you want uh -huh. to say before we go? Mm -hmm, yeah, I, um, I did find the tape that I meant to send y'all, so I'm going to send that in. Um. And I swear this one does not have lube or oil or nothing like that. It's just me doing that stuff that Johnny Knoxville do. Baby, 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 baby. Okay, it's the same tape. We're watching the same <laughs> tape right now. It's literally a dude, duplicate. Hang up on this dude. I'm, I'm, I'm afraid it might not even really be Mr. Rob. All right, we're out of here. <laughs>